Welcome to AccountingExcel.com. This is a tutorial on how the fixed asset schedule works. Uh, the fixed asset schedule is available at AccountingExcel.com in the store. Um, so the fixed asset schedule has one tab. It's very simple. So the first thing I think you should do is move this tab over to uh, your Accounting Excel workbook. Um, you don't have to do this in order for the fixed asset schedule to work. Um, but if you want to keep everything in the same file and keep it uh, keep it nice and clean, um, that's what I suggest that you do. So to do that, you just uh, right click on it, right click on the on the tab at the bottom, and you want to select Move or Copy, and then select Create a Copy. From your drop down, you can select your Accounting Excel workbook, um, and then you just want to select Move to End. Then you can see here how it adds it to your accounting Excel file. So now you have journal, trial balance, account detail, lists, and then the tab that you just added. So let's just get started here on the journal tab. Um, if you haven't um, watched the tutorial for accounting Excel, I suggest that you go do that. Um, some of the transactions on here were pre-populated from that tutorial. And I'm just kind of picking up where we left off from that tutorial. So the transactions that I've entered in for this tutorial, I'm highlighting here on 531. So you can see here on 531, we bought a, a t-shirt warehouse for $10,000, and then we bought a delivery truck for $9,000. So these two fixed assets we want to add to our fixed asset schedule. So to do that, you just click on the fixed asset schedule. And in our description, we want to put t-shirt warehouse. and delivery truck. And then you wanna enter a location. Um, sometimes the location's good for uh, personal property tax and things like that. So let's just make up some locations here. So we have Jacksonville, Florida. And this is Bakersfield, California. And then the date purchased, 531-15. Then you want to enter the amounts here. So 10,000 for the warehouse and 9,000 for the delivery truck. Then here you can enter in your useful life in months. Um, so let's go ahead and enter in um, Let's assume uh, 30 years for the, the warehouse, so that's 360 months. And then for the delivery truck, let's just assume 7 years, so that's 84 months. And then what this does is it calculates your monthly expense um, here in column Q. So the first month that you want to record your expense is June, so because you bought it on 531, so your first month of expense would be in June. So your expense for June is going to be 134.92. So to record that, you just want to come to your journal, type it in here, 134.92, 134.92, and put in your date, 6:30. Six thirty fifteen, and then you want to debit depreciation expense because you want to record expenses, you want to debit so depreciation expense, and then your credit's going to be to accumulated depreciation. Um, and I know that I said before that usually assets have debit balances. Um, this is Accumulated depreciation is what's considered a contra account. So this is actually in the asset section of your trial balance, but it has a credit balance because it's offsetting your fixed assets. So here you just put uh, description, we'll just put monthly depreciation. And then you have your uh, depreciation recorded for the month. 
So to update your trial balance, you want to come to your trial balance, right click on it, select refresh. That puts in your accumulated appreciation there. And then what you can do is move that up next to your fixed assets like that. And then if you want to see what your net balance is there, you can go to your account detail. And here you can select multiple items. You have your fixed assets scheduled, or your fixed assets selected there. And then you can also uh, select your accumulated appreciation. That'll give you your balance, 186508. And so that's the amount that you want to put in on your fixed asset schedule for your trial balance, 18. 186568. Uh, let's just double check that. 186508. Okay. And then you can see here our difference is 135, and it's approximately the same amount as your monthly expense. So it'll get a little more complicated than that, but. This is just an example. So you, then you come to column K and you want to put in the months that you've, that you've expensed. So you want to put in one, one. And then you can see the difference here is uh, a rounding error because it's calculating it based off the monthly expense. So it's dividing the amount by the number of years to come up with a number, but this number is rounded to the nearest penny. So it's coming up with a rounding difference. That's how you record uh, fixed assets uh, using Accounting Excel and the fixed assets schedule. Um, hopefully you thought that this was helpful. If you uh, uh, want to take some time to look at some of the other tutorials and some of the other videos and look at the store, um, I think you'll find that there's a lot more things that you can find helpful on there. Thank you very much.